Well, hi everybody. This is Bruce at Clayhorse Music in Boise. How's life in the big city? Today we're going to explore another great bossa nova classic by Antonio Carlos Jobim. This is called Desafinado. I believe that's the correct way to pronounce it from listening to the lyrics. Now, loosely translated from Portuguese, it means slightly out of tune. Now here's a song that a real genius like Jobim could write and um, turn into a, a very charming um, a, a little tune with uh, a lot of uh, little quirks in it. Whereas if any uh, lesser mortal had written it, like uh, me or you, people probably would have turned their noses up and say, well, that's all wrong. And let me give you an example of that. The first two chords in the song go like this. So that already gives you that feeling of dissonance. There's a couple of other places in the song that give you that same kind of feeling. There's a chord progression like that, a little bit later on. Then. But what's interesting is that he can always manage to resolve it to some very beautiful uh, chords, uh, you know, before and after those dissonant chords, and it just kind of catches your attention. You go, wow, that's really amazing. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do with this song, since in this particular song, the, the lead part is a little bit more interesting than, actually interesting is maybe the wrong word, but a little bit more complex than some of the other bossa nova songs that we've been studying, where the lead parts are extremely simple even though the chord progressions can be rather elaborate. In this case, the chord progression is rather elaborate and fairly complex. Uh, like so many other songs um, in Bossa Nova, uh, we have maybe 15 or 20 or 25 unique chords in these songs. It's not like your three chord num wonders that, uh, like ZZ Top says, three dudes, three chords. So this is like, well, 25 chords. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put uh, <clears throat> the chord portion of it, the rhythm portion of it, into a separate video, which could just be like a practice video, and I will make it um, kind of a backing track. But I will also list the chords. And at the end of this video, I will go through the chords slowly, um, just showing you the fingering of the chords, but I won't go into too much depth of the chords because it's just too complex. So. Uh, this particular arrangement is written in uh, F, F major 7th, and uh, the chord progression comes from this book, which I have recommended previously. And um, the lead part comes mostly from me listening to uh, Stan Getz on the saxophone, uh, and it is just pretty much the vocal part of it without too much improvisation or anything like that. So, uh, let's get started with that lead part. Okay, so here's that lead part. Let me play the first few notes for you here. We're going to be in the 5th position. We're going to cover the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th frets. We're going to start out with the first finger on the 3rd string. That's a C. And it's going to go like this. One, three. goes like this. That's going to start out on the third string with the third finger. It's going to go three, one, two, four, two, one, four, one, four, four, four. So up to that point, let's play what we've got. Okay, next part goes like this. We're still in the fifth position. We're going to start out on the first string with the fourth finger, little finger. It's going to go 
four, two, one, four, two, one, one, two, three, one, three, But anyway, we're we're still in the fifth position here through the whole thing. Now the next part goes like this. We're going to slide into the sixth position here. We'll play this little part, um, and we're going to start out with our little finger on the second string. So that's going to be. Four, three, one, two, four, three, one, two, one, one, one. Okay, let's play through that whole first section slowly, and then we can play it up to speed with the backing track. Um, this gives you a feel for the lead through the whole song really. The rest of it uh, are just basic variations of this uh, first lead part. So we're going to start out on the third string fifth fret and we're going to play through that lead part from the beginning slowly. Okay, it's going to go Okay, good. Now let's play it up to speed with the backing track. Start the rhythm here so we can count it in and start together. So make sure you're on that C note there to get started off with. Okay, one, two, one, two, three, four. taken a lot of liberties with the um, interpretation of that and the timing but um, pretty much get the notes down and you can play all kinds of games with the uh, interpretation of the lead part but that's pretty much the first part okay the second part of the lead uh, starts out exactly the same as the first part we've already played but then it goes off in a significantly different direction so I'll show you kind of how it goes here it, it starts out the same goes the same. That's the same. Then it goes. The first time it went. Second time it goes. So that's on the first string, uh, fourth finger, little finger, it goes four, three, two, four, two, one, four, two, four, two, four, two, four. And then it goes to the this part. So that's second string, first finger. One, three, one, three, one, three, two, three. So, all right, and then the next part goes like this. So that's one, three, one, three, one, three, two, three, one, and 
and then we're going to shift down to the fourth position and play the third string with the first finger and then second finger on the second string. And that sets us up in a perfect position for the next little run which goes like this. Okay, so that will be second string, second finger, two, four, one, two, four, two, and then you drop down to the third string on the third finger, three, four, and then two, four, two, four, two. So um, the whole section, second section up to that point goes like this. Okay, so out of the last little section has left us there with our second finger in position. We're going to slide now back into the fifth position with the little finger on the fourth fret of the second string, like this. So that's four, one, four, one, four, two, one, two, four. And then it goes. So, second string, four, two, three, four, and then two, one, two. So, four, three, four, two, one, two, one, four, two, one, two, four. And then if you want, you can come up and, and hit the first string on the fourth fret. So. All right. And then we're back to essentially the beginning and the end at the same time. We're going to go right back into that C. And we're going to wrap it up. Okay, the ending part is really a lot of fun to play. It kind of goes like this. Okay, so the beginning uh, of the end is just like the beginning of the beginning, it goes. Okay, then it goes. Instead of going, it goes. So I like to play it with those slides. I come up with my little finger up to the 10th fret of the first string and it's a chromatic so it, it's actually down you know one two three four five and and then I slide that little finger right back up to where it was and then come in with the second string on the same fret And then you're back into the fifth position. You do some chromatic stuff. Four, three, two, one, two, one, and then four, two, one, one, four. Like 
like that, and then it goes see, on third string, third finger. Three, one, two, 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 and then three, one, two, 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 four, two, like and then four, one, two, 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 one, and then this is an important kind of a blues note kind of idea and here you come in with the um, the fourth fret instead of the third you could or you could go much better actually the way it's written it goes and it gives you a much nicer feel so one two 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 one four one four two two So let's go over that whole last section slowly, note for note. And that, my friends, is pretty much the whole lead. I'm going to record a practice backing track for you so that you can practice this lead in the key of F major 7th. I'm not too sure that you can find something on YouTube that you can use a backing, as a backing track, so that's why I'm going to do that. Um, I would just like to leave with one idea that I heard many years ago that I thought was very profound. Somebody told me that anyone who plays guitar, especially lead guitar, should listen and emulate sax players. Uh, my favorite sax player is Stan Getz. And if you listen to some of his lead parts, he'll usually start out with just a very simple melody and then he will do all kinds of variations on it. And I think those are extremely instructive for guitar players. The reason is, is we have a tendency to get stuck in a rut and play the same old blues scales and stuff over and over and all the same cliches that you've heard a million times before. Now, why do that if you have an opportunity to start to learn more of a modal way of playing? I will do some videos that show how to very gracefully break out of the pentatonic and blues scale into some very uh, interesting modal variations that are quite easy to add to your existing uh, patterns. Um, so I would highly recommend that you listen to sax players. The other thing is that I have become uh, much more fond of playing the lead part separate from the rhythm part, whereas when I used to play guitar professionally and play uh, quite a bit uh, around other people, I used to always try to work out the chords. like that. Um, I am leaning away from that now because I feel that that in a way very much hampers your ability to interpret the lead. So I would very much more now like to hear a set of really interesting clean chords with a very uh, evocative uh, melody over them. And you just, very difficult to do both of those things at the same time in the same lead part. So in case you've ever wondered why I always tend to break everything up into a rhythm part and a lead part, that's why. Um, all of these songs have very uh, interesting uh, improvisations that can go with these chords, and we haven't gotten into any of that, and of course it's pretty spontaneous, so it's kind of hard to teach that. But nevertheless, I think that it's another interesting idea to think about. Um, a lot of people feel like they want to play the leads and lead and the chords at the same time, and that's great and that's fine and everything. It's just my own personal taste that I've started to sort of lean away from that. So anyway, just my two cents worth. I hope that you got something out of this video and I will see you in the next video. So have a good day. Take care.